this video will show you how to manipulate the data you get from your Zoom poll report. So in the session here, there were about five questions and each student answered um, each of the five questions. But when you get the data from Zoom, it just kind of dumps it into an unusable format. First thing you want to do is clean up the data. So I'm going to remove these rows and I'm going to remove some columns that I don't need. I don't need the numbers column. That's the name. This is the email. These are all fake. This is fake data. I'm going to remove the date and time submitted. Then the next column is your questions. So I'm going to call that questions. And then the next column is what the student or participant answered. Now my data is ready to do a quick pivot table. I want to see what each student answered for each question. So the first thing I want to do is select my data and then click on insert pivot table. Um, I've already selected my range and I'm going to put it in the existing worksheet and I'm going to put it right about there and then click OK. So now I can build my pivot table right on the right hand side here. So the first thing I want to do is put the usernames into the rows. OK, so now I have a list of my students in alphabetical order and then I can add the answers. And so now I know what Addie answered, what Ada answered. Um, normally, if you, when you create a pivot table, you would put the value, the column in the values. But this aggregates the data as numeric data and tries to count it or sum it or whatever. So if you put it in the rows, it acts like um, a label, like plain text. Now, if you need to, you can add the questions. I'm going to put it right above answers. So that way I can see the question that was asked and then the answer. Okay. And if you don't want the questions there, you can just uncheck that to remove that. But this I find is one of the easiest ways to, to see what the student answered. And then if you want to, you can have a grades column and then, you know, give your student a grade. Okay. Now here's a more challenging way to present the student's answers. Um, I'm going to have to convert this CSV file to an Excel file. So first I'm going to delete what I have here. And then now I'm going to click on File, Save As, and uh, put it in my fake data folder. And I'm going to convert this from a CSV to an Excel workbook. So now this is an XLSX, which is Excel, and I'm going to do something different. Um, I'm going to create the pivot table again by selecting my columns and then clicking on insert pivot table. And then I'm going to put it in the existing sheet and put it, you know, right by column H. But now I'm going to add this data to the data model so I can do a little something different and access other formulas that are not necessarily inherent with um, regular Excel. So I'm going to check that off and then click OK. And I got my pivot tables field, except now I'm going to add a new measure here. So we have all these measures, but I'm going to add a new one. So if I right click on range and then click on add measure, um, I'm going to call this one um, answers across. And I'm going to use something called the concatenate X formula. This will put all the answers in one cell uh, separated by commas. So I'm going to use the table name range. And then I got to box in um, the answers column label. So it's answers. 
comma. Oops, I think I need a comma here. And then it's going to be separated by a comma. So it's to put a text field, you want to do um, quote, comma, quote, and then you can close up the concatenate X formula. And then I'm going to click OK. So now you'll notice I have this new measure, answers across. So I'm going to put the username in the rows, so I have a list of all my students, and then now I'm going to add the answers across measure into the values. And you can see here I have each student and their answers separated by commas.